All right, let's do some walking and talking. Hey guys, it's Ben. Ever since I kind of invented the recompostinator, we've kind of skipped the step in the compost and that's actually making compost, right? I've always kind of had this, I need a machine that can take this, right? This is a stalk of a, uh, a sunflower gone by, right? And it's got, you know, this fibrous material, which is cool. It's also got dirt. Now, I don't want to put it through like a, a tree chipper. They're a little delicate for that. So I've always kind of been thinking in my mind, well, I've got all these mowers. There's got to be something I can make that can use the power of a lawnmower to create compost, which we can then recompostinate later, right? So let me show you my idea. So I have these crates. Uh, the company I work for gets a lot of pallets and other companies that I see around have pallets that you can come and get. So I've got a bunch of crates. And so what it would be nice is I'm thinking is to have some sort of machine mounted on the top of one of these crates. So what would happen is in theory, we'd have a top on this here. We'd have our, our lawnmower device on top and a hole for things to pass through. So we would somehow get things into the top of the mower it would shred them with its blade and then it would actually discharge it down into this bin here which if we cut a hole in the side we could then shovel out but that keeps fingers and things out of the the blade area so that's kind of my idea you'll see it as we kind of go through because we're, we're going to build this thing of course it's the whole point of the video but um, definitely need the crate and the roof for the crate and one of these is the top for it um, to put the mower on now let's go see if we can find a mower of course in my travels I run into lots of mowers. This one's all ready to go. It doesn't even have wheels on it. Now I have mowing decks that do have discharge and I want to keep leave those alone because I don't have many of them. But like a mulching machine like this one here would be perfect because the whole in would be cut by me and the whole out would be on the wood below it here. So all these mowers technically are good. We've got the awesome Honda here, but uh, we're going to save that motor and that's a nice generic motor that's a good one and i have over here we'll leave the side discharge alone this one looks nice it's kind of a 21 inch uh mulching deck that's a discharge and this oh this landmark is pretty three and a half horsepower not as much but it might be only but oh wait it has the bagger so we'll leave it and that one also has the bagger so the decks are good even if the motor suck the honda will probably end up on one of these but this one has no no uh, bag, and I don't know if it runs or not yet, but we'll, that's easy to fix. Oh, there's a mouse, so I've got too many mice in here with my beautiful car. So they're becoming a barn find. So, hmm, the Craftsman 5.5, that's uh, horsepower. Okay, maybe I want that, because I do want a little bit more go. So you win. Let's take this one out front and uh, throw some stuff in it oil and whatever and let's see if we can ooh that's 6.5 horses talking to me now though what i found is the recompostinator is slightly underpowered so more power the better i know i haven't tried to start this one yet either now is that 6.5 horsepower yeah it is hmm i don't care about the drive we'll disable that okay you talked me into it so we'll try this mower here it's a 22 inch which is i guess good enough but Let's go see if we can get this thing to start. I know I'm putting the cart before the horse here, but if this thing runs, then that'd be fantastic. This is a Tecumseh, which if you watch my primary video is me fixing one. I'm pretty good with them, uh, but it doesn't have an air filter on it and I don't want to have to buy anything, right? But this one is also a Tecumseh. It's only three and a half horsepower, but it does have an air filter on it, if you notice. So we'll make it work, but uh, once again, we're back to the red one, which would also be fine. It's just kind of underpowered, right? So we'll try to get the big one running. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. In fact, I can check the oil right now. SAE 30, not even a 1030, just a 30. And oh, it's really crappy, but it's in there. So that's enough to know. If I can get it running, great. Then I can start working around it, right? Uh, I just need to start the frame. It is bone cold dry which is cool. The primer bulb is cracked, but hey, look at that. I got a spare over there, sweet for me. Uh, this is kind of 
That's not very free. That's not bad though. Okay, so uh, we'll see if it has any spark. The dead man control, I think, on this one still works. Yeah, I'm using a battery charger on my phone. And then it's got this engaged drive. Got to close click or something. Yeah, it may have at one point. Looks like there's something broken there. But you click it in gear and away you go. Just a stupid spring and a belt that comes off the. I don't really care about that. All right, let's get some gas in it. Uh, Pre-made gas and two times the dose of seafoam running formula. Uh, if I get rid of these two mowers, I'd be down to 19 spare mowers. So kind of lame. I know. But, uh, that's some of the tank. The fill fort's right here, right? So it doesn't have to be that high up. And I'll just get my gas back if it doesn't work after we figure out what's wrong with it. It does have a primer so we can speed things along, but the bowl does need to get flooded. So we'll just chillax with that. We'll give it a few minutes and uh, come on back. And I'll uh, put on a tripod, because this could be exciting, or not, but it's better than me and my wiggly hands, so. Uh, I brought ear muffs, because I'm confident that it might actually start, and if it will, it will probably be loud, so. We've got gas in it. Oh, I haven't primered it yet. Let's do that, right? Let's not be shy. Thing has it run. It could have run last year. I don't know when I picked it. And uh, I don't know why they gave it up. I'm guessing because the drive stopped working. But oh, that's good. Let's uh, give it a pull. Let's see what goes on. You know, before I get too crazy, safety first, right? Let's make sure this thing has a. Uh... Oh wow! It's. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera. It's got a nice blade on it, actually. A little small. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you. <coughs> <coughs> so that'd be great. Let's give her a spin. There's no gas smell, so I've been pulling on it, and there's still... Looks like I'm going to have to watch my video, update my own carburetor. I can't plug it up here. Of course, the... we should check for spark too, right? But let's pretend. Solid state ignition. Nice. My craftsman loved to get primed, the other one. Let's see how we do it. I'm not going to put my ear muscle on this time. Surprise me. Not a peep. So let's squirt some fuel down the carburetor because I'm cool like that. See if we can get a kick out of it. If not, we'll pull the plug. Okay, so we have uh, some gasoline in my little uh, gasoline squirt bottle here. A couple squirts never hurt anybody, right? All right. Let's close. That should be open in theory. Okay, let's try again. This is just a cheap way of checking to see if it's a spark issue. If I don't get any bang for my buck here, then uh, it's definitely probably a, a, a spark issue. But if I do get a bang, then it's a fuel issue, and we'll continue on with this frame. Well, there you go. So a little bit of gas, a little bit of fire, and it runs. So <clears throat> I'm going to call it good because I can clean this and I'll save it for another video. Um, but now we can move on to building the box for the recompostinator. So let's do that. At this point, I'm sure my wife's like, great, I'm putting crap on the lawn. That's awesome. Okay, so we have a crate. I saved some wheels from a cart, so if this works out, we'll put wheels under it, so that'll help. But my idea is that you will transport this to wherever you're composting stuff or want to, and it'll be in the two pieces, of course, the bottom and then the top with the mower on it. 
uh, and you'll assemble it on site, run it, shred everything at some point, either through some sort of door. I haven't figured that part out yet. Uh, you'll open it, take a shovel, dig out what you need, put it in the wheelbarrow, haul that to the compost pile, uh, and put it back on and continue on. And then when you're done using it, just pick it up and haul it away. That way you can keep it in the barn or whatever over the winter time. But you know, you can bring it right to the sunflowers when you're shredding those or the potato plants or whatever. So uh, there's the top lid. Now let's transport that onto there so we can kind of get the feel of how we need to design the chassis for this thing. All right, last segment of the video. Um, okay, so we've got the bin and we got the mower. I had to use some lubricant to get the wheels down as low as I can. The nice thing is, is that it will sit on its chassis, or the frame will anyway. So that's great because I want minimum gap here for obvious reasons. Uh, it's now at mid-level. So any shrapnel will have a very small hole to get through and we'll build a frame, like I said, with two by fours to encase it essentially. Uh, I need to figure out two things where to put the hole the first hole being on top and i'll have to cut that hole and it will be a substantial size so i'm thinking the higher up the better so maybe up towards the tunnel here like right here and the um and this will be where the product and i'll have to build a chute will come in so that clump of dirt that clump of plant that clump of whatever uh will come into it and i keep calling it the recomposinator but it's not it's the chompinator or something like that yeah, you are, buddy. And that's my three-year-old son. Or I could cut it here. It could be substantially larger uh, in a nice area. And then the blade would could essentially, it's going to be coming around here. And we'll flip the blade over too, right? So the blade's on top and the fan's on the bottom. We give it that much deck to spin around. And then if we put the hole maybe, uh, I, I'm thinking maybe in the wood. Uh, underneath the deck maybe about here that's kind of the natural discharge that being said I don't want to rush things through I want it to get chipped up quite a bit too right so but I'm thinking maybe back here so that way we, if we drop stuff here it would come around and then it would it would shatter back here plus we're, we're up higher off the, the blade level up here so stuff can fall in better like we could even cut it here uh, and then it could also be a good gauge to see if a hole is plugged right you could look down and see but the biggest thing is we have to make some kind of chute defense, right? Because you don't want to throw something in a rock hit or something and have it come flinging back at you, right? You'll be wearing proper protective equipment, but still, that's not cool. So I think we'll cut away that part of the deck here. And then the hole in the, the wood would actually be somewhere uh, maybe even in here. Just a big hole for things to fall. I wonder where I got that grass from. Let's not try. Could have been just dragging along and picked up my own grass. Anyway, I wander. Cool thing here, so you can take the handle off, this extra handle, just leave the bar for starting. So that's a win. The whole front gear mechanism, pfft, gone. Uh, don't need that. And I gotta redo the carburetor, which will be another video, of course. And then we can always plug up the front here as well. I don't know how windy this thing will be. So, well, inevitably, Get it running without the front here maybe that would be peachy maybe we actually uh take the whole not nose off and that's where you shovel from so you can stand back here shovel the crop in it grinds it and makes it into dust and powder and stuff it sprays it down in here hopefully without plugging too bad uh and then you can just once this is full you shovel it out into a wheelbarrow and haul it to your compost pile that's that that's what i want okay so this is where I'm at with that. So um, if you have any questions, you won't because it's new. If you have any suggestions, holy crap, lay it on me. I'd love to hear some suggestions for that. The mower is probably pretty good. Uh, go ahead and leave those in the comments section. We'll leave it for now. I'm not going to call it part one because whenever I do parts, I inevitably don't do it well. So uh, we'll just say that this is the inspirational side of the Chompinator. The Chompinator is pretty good. Let's go with that. Anyway, uh, if you have a name suggestion, I'll take that too. But all right, guys, have a good night, guys and gals. Um, have a good night, and we'll see how this project continues. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the video I've got lined up for you next and the playlist I've got cooking up for you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and to my Homestead channel, uh, where we've got a little bit less tractory stuff going on for you. And we'll see you next time.